Hello everyone, welcome to TechWeb Dots. Today I am going to share what is durable function and it's one of the pattern chaining pattern and this tutorial is for beginners and I will explain this with very easy code example. So let's move ahead without wasting time. All the green one I have already discussed in my previous two sessions and today I will focus on durable functions and chaining pattern. Let's move ahead. So there are some prerequisites that I would like to share and I strongly suggest you to watch the previous two sessions which are based on Azure functions and what is trigger, binding and common scenarios and I also discussed HTTP trigger and how we can implement, how to debug locally and how to check the things on Azure portal. Okay, so all the basic definition I've already covered in my previous two sessions. So let's move ahead from here. What is durable functions? Durable function is an extension of Azure functions, means whatever implementation that we can do with Azure functions. So durable function is works on top of that, that lets you write in a stateful functions in a serverless compute environment. When we are saying stateful, functions it means we are managing states of the function execution as well the extension lets you define a stateful workflows by writing orchestrator function means orchestration function is the one who is taking care of all the stateful workflows okay and stateful entities by writing entity functions we can write different type of function and one of them is entity function as well we will discuss a bit more when we move ahead so using the Azure function programming model. So this is what we can achieve with the help of Azure durable functions. The extension manages state, checkpoints and restarts for you and allowing you to focus only on your business logic. A durable function app is a solution that is made up of different Azure functions. Functions can play different roles in a durable function orchestration. When we are saying different roles means they can perform different different action maybe saving a file into a blob container pushing a message to a queue or maybe other processing things durable functions is designed to work with all azure functions programming language but may have different minimum requirements for each language so for this just check out the description of this video i will paste all the important links over there like azure functions there are templates to help you to develop durable functions using Visual Studio 2019 or higher and we are talking about template we have already seen one template in the previous video as well so we will see for durable functions as well now we talk about patterns so generally we say these are the application patterns and the primary use case for durable functions is simplifying complex and stateful coordination because we are talking about managing a state and passing a state so we are saying a stateful coordination requirements in serverless application okay and these are the types of pattern which are available so the following section describe typical application patterns that can benefit from durable functions so one of them is function chaining that we will discuss today and remaining we will discuss in the upcoming videos. So what is function chaining? As you can see in the figure, it is very much straightforward. You can see there is a function one, which is processing something and producing some output. Again, we are moving to the next function, the next function, which is processing something and at the end function four. So let's go by definition. You can use durable function to implement the function chaining pattern concisely as show in the example yes we have seen so what it is saying is we need to create a durable function and in that we will follow this chaining pattern okay in the function chaining pattern a sequence of function executes in a specific order when we are saying a specific order means one function is executed then second and then third it is not like all are executing at the same time in this pattern the output of one function is applied to the input of another function or may be used in another way to the another function okay the values function 1 2 3 and 4 are the names of other functions in the same function app yes it is completely possible i will show you in a practical manner don't worry you can implement control flow by using normal imperative coding construct means you can use different conditions for example 
if condition, else condition, or maybe other loops to manage your functions. Code execute from the top-down approach. The code can evolve existing language control flow semantics like conditional and loops as well. You can include error handling logic in try, catch, finally block as well. So this is also allowed with function chaining. Now, when we will create a function that will look something like this, okay? And what is the name of this function that I already shared how to check this? This is the function name, durable function underscore chaining pattern. So I have created this, this function. Don't worry, I will show you everything in a practical manner. But let's read what actually we are creating in durable function, okay? So you can use context parameter to invoke other functions by name bypassing parameter and return function output. You can see this is our function name, durable function, okay? And in that, we have a I durable orchestration context. So this is the context we are talking about. And this is the same context we are using to call activity async. It means we are calling activity function. Those function can perform some activity, okay? And we are following three of them one by one, okay? So the next important point is each time the code calls await the durable function framework checkpoints the progress of the current function instance. Okay, so it checks what is going on in this function and execute or process the result. If the process or virtual machine re recycles midway through the execution, so the function instances resume from the proceeding await call. Means if we are here and your VM recycles and any other action is performing on the server, then it goes to the previous one to check the state and it is managing. And where it is storing all that kind of information, it is managing behind the storage account. We will discuss everything. Okay. Now everything is clear. So as you can recall in our previous session, we created one HTTP trigger example. We have seen this. This is a very straightforward one where we have I action result. This is HTTP trigger means we just hit the URL and this function, this piece of code will be executed. Okay. Now, what you need to do if you want to add one more durable function in this solution. So what we will do simply we just right click, right -click on the solution. Okay. And there's the option in add new Azure functions. And then after that, this window will open. From here, you can select the Azure functions you want to add. So this is the one where we are adding a new function in the existing solution. But the steps are almost same. You can add in a brand new solution as well. Okay, so you select the Azure function, you provide name. And then after that, it allows you to select any one of them which are available triggers. So as you can see in the previous part, we discussed HTTP trigger, okay, but there are other options as well. So we will select durable functions orchestration. We will select this one and just move next. So after adding the durable functions, I have provided this name. So the whole new class of durable function looks like this. This is our static class. This is our function name that I have provided. And it's the same as the file name as well. And one more thing, before running the solution, in terms of durable functions, you should have on your machine Microsoft Azure emulator, okay? This is required if you are running or performing development and testing on your local environment, okay? So you should check, maybe if you are using like me, Windows, you can just type in your search section, Azure emulator and just run that application. So after running the application, it should be in a start state. Okay, as it is saying for me, storage emulator started. So without starting this emulator, your durable function will not work or you will get exception. Okay, so let's move. On. This is my Visual Studio and here you can see this is the same solution that I was using in my previous sessions as well. So this is our durable function chaining pattern. Okay, so in this durable function, this, this is a piece of code which is automatically created when you will first time create the durable function. Okay, so what is happening inside? If you will see, we are creating a new list of the string. Okay, and in that what we are adding, we are adding the result. Okay, of each activity. Okay, and how we are calling calling the another activity, we are using the context parameter, and we are calling call 
activity a thing okay and in this method what we need to pass the function name that we want to call which will be activity function or you can call it a activity trigger okay and along with that we can also pass a input parameter as well if you want to pass any okay so this is our activity name this is my input parameter okay so where is this function durable function underscore chaining pattern underscore hello so here is my function okay and you can see this is activity one so this call will call this function its name we are passing this to q this is a log parameter and through which we can lock the information and at the end what we are returning from this function this activity function we are saying hello and the name that we are passing means hello tokyo similarly three continuous call it will be hello tokyo hello settle hello london okay then we are adding all these things in this output type of list of a string and we are returning this one very simple one because we are returning list of a string now if you want to trigger this orchestration function to call this activity so we should trigger this function as well so how we can trigger so one of the way is that i explain to you with the help of http trigger so this one is automatically created but i want to use the one that i was using in my previous session which is this one http example there's no special code that written over here it is very simple one okay let me go back here http trigger so what we are doing here we are saying we are creating instance id how we are just calling the starter a starter is nothing but my i durable orchestration client so this second parameter we can pass in this http trigger okay one thing and secondly this starter we are calling a start new async and we are passing the durable function chaining pattern okay i am giving the name of my orchestration function and i don't want to pass anything so just passing null okay now next after getting the instance id i'm just logging this information and then at the end i'm saying starter dot create check the status response okay what it will do it will call the orchestration by passing this id and that orchestration function will call the further activities so same piece of code already written over here which was auto generated okay but i use the existing one so you can relate all those things and one more very very important thing if you are running locally you should go to the local setting and you need to update the value of azure web jobs storage okay in this you have to provide used development storage to true without this it will not allow you to run this locally okay so we have seen all the changes okay don't worry about the piece of code the github repo link is given in the description of this video okay so let me run the solution right now and let's see what output comes after running the solution you will see a console window like this and what we can see here with the help of this url we can hit the http trigger and it is also displaying orchestration trigger is also available and activity trigger is also defined in this solution okay so what we need to do we will just copy this url and paste into the browser to see what output comes after hitting this url i can see this output i am getting okay so this output what it is showing it is showing the status query get uri send event post uri terminate post uri purge history delete uri restart post uri okay if you will go to the first url let me copy this url right now okay just copy it after executing the first url we can see what is the name of the function which was given durable function chaining pattern this is the instance id this is the runtime status which is complete there is no input there is no custom status and what is the output hello tokyo hello citadel and hello london this is the create time and this is the last update time okay so this is what we can achieve with the help of azure function okay i hope you like this let's go back to the solution so here we can see what method we called create check status response okay and all the outputs are stored in this output and how you can check you can just simply place a breakpoint okay and when you will hit the http trigger so all these activities will be called it is very easy to debug okay and what what 
type of result it was returning i action result okay and we are also using the same type of result but if you will see which was by default created when we, when we created the durable function so it was http response message so both are acceptable if you want to publish this function to the azure portal so steps are very easy and the steps are same that i shown you in the previous video the only thing that you need to do is just right click on it select publish and select your azure function and your function app and just hit publish that's it and the url will be created we will use in the same way that i just and your orchestration function will be triggered your activity function will be triggered and that's it one more important thing so behind the scene the console window was open on your machine so it will display you what are the things which are executed for your functions okay so you can see it is saying hello tokyo it's saying hello settle it is calling hello london so all these kind of information you can see in this console window okay let's go back to the presentation now very important thing when you are working with the azure functions on azure portal so a storage account is required why okay let me tell you so azure web jobs storage so all these operations that the durable functions in the background uses azure web jobs storage so what is that azure functions runtime uses a storage account connection okay so storage account is must while you are using functions okay and that connection is string for normal operation that you have to provide in your app settings okay and storage account requirements when creating a function app you must create or link to a general purpose azure storage account that supports blob queue and table storage this is another very important point while you are working this requirement exists because functions relies on azure storage for operations like managing triggers key management event hub checkpoints and logging function execution so all this kind of stuff requires a storage account okay and some storage accounts don't support queue and tables these accounts include blob only storage accounts and azure premium storage so make sure you have one general purpose azure storage account okay so i hope you like this video if you have any suggestion so you can drop into the comment box and i really need your feedback that's the only inspiration for me to create such videos and i will see you in the next video in which we will discuss fan out and fan in pattern till then bye bye